There we go. So the great thing about being a presenter is we don't have an ah pause counter. I don't have a so counter. And I realized that I don't have one. I use it more than I ever would. So I'm going to recommend that going forward, I have an on pause counter, a so counter, a, a crippling word counter. But by a show of hands, or for you savvy tech people, click of the mouse, who is currently a sergeant of arms or who has been a sergeant of arms in the past? Perfect. The reality is, most of you guys know I can only see three people. So I kind of hoping that everybody raised their hands. The next two slides, I personally, I try to work them into every presentation that I do. And why not? I'm proud of my family. I want to show my family off. I want to make sure that everybody gets to see my family. So I, I find the verbiage to tie it all into it. You got to understand that the first photo, it's not my family, but it's in my mind, it's a representation of a meeting that is not properly set up. This type of setup, it doesn't help our guests feel comfortable when they first get there. We got to remember that a majority of our guests emotionally look like this. It's a thought of public speaking. There we go. We're emotionally frazzled don't want to come through the door, an unprepared meeting, that's what this could look like to, to a, a new person coming on. On the flip side, if that sergeant of arms is doing a bang up job and presenting a well-structured and organized meeting, that calms the guests, especially when they're walking through what they imagine to be the gates of hell. We can, we can calm them, we, we can display uh, just a well-organized. And again, this is just my opinion of what a well-organized meeting looks like. Boom. Sophisticated, prepared, well put together, and most importantly, professional. And these two, these two are my cats. They're my kids. I don't have kids. So th these are my pride and joy that I, no matter what speech I do, this is what I time into. And the reality of it is, when we present the meeting as Sergeant of Arms, this is what we want the meeting to look like. We don't want it to look like this and dis disorganized and kind of just not put together to where if we present that, our guests think we're doing, we, we, we know what we're doing, we've got it down. It, it creates a calming effect. Now that I've given you a picture, and again, this is simply what I feel a prepared versus an unprepared meeting looks like. We're gonna go over today's agenda. I've blocked out 10 to 15 minutes for questions at the end. <laughs> Although I may not have all the answers, quite frankly, I may not have any of the answers, but what you're gonna learn is I have the resources and as Toastmasters, we all have the resources to be able to reach out and get the answers. And I will have the answers to any questions I can't answer or Jason's unable to help me with. I will have them to you by tomorrow afternoon. So on the agenda, you're not gonna learn anything earth shattering that you're gonna write home about. I, I'll give this to you. If you wanna write home, to, write home about something, those two cats, they are the beneficiary of every asset financially and physically that my wife have. We have willed everything out to them. If you want to really upset your family, will everything to your pets and don't leave anything for anybody else, that you can write home about because that'll piss everybody off. But you will learn what, what is your role, how to perform it, what's expected of you. And most importantly, you're going to learn the resources to create success for you and your club. At Toastmasters, we're all about resources. There might only be a handful of links for TI. But think about it, there's 300, over 364,000 members in 145 countries and 16,200 clubs. Let's go back to that last number. That's 16,200 of you guys. That's a lot of resources. And Zoom has really put us in touch with all 16,200 
sergeant of arms. That, that's a great thing that this is kind of brought on to us. So our ses session objectives, we're gonna identify your role. And I've touched a little bit about on what you're gonna present as the sergeant of arms. How do you fulfill your role? It's kind of the how, how to, I, I guess you would say. And then finally, we're gonna cover the resources. Sergeant of Arms role today, and you heard Jason talk about, it, he got to do the contest in person last year. It's not what it was a year ago. If this is your first run at Sergeant of Arms role, well, digital, digital is all you know. If it's in person, meaning you were in the prior, well, in person is all you know. Either way, we all know there's been a great evolution in Toastmasters. It's really truly tied international Toastmasters together and just brought us all in the same room. I, I attend meetings over the weekends and there's four or five people from Germany that always attend one particular club. So it's really brought the international side of it truly back together. So your role, your role is to create the face of the club. It's the first impression. First impression is the lasting impression. I don't remember a lot of my officers my first year, but Jeremy Coleman, who's the Sergeant of Arms, I remember him because he introduced me. He engaged me right when I came through the door. And I went to the door multiple times and turned around and went home. Never made it through the double doors. I have eight years in recovery. And prior to that, I spent a lot of time going up to double doors and turn on and going home. Jeremy had intercepted me one of my times and really gave me that greeting that made it feel warm and inviting and kind of got me to drop my guard. That's what a Sergeant Arms can do. You create the face of the club. You create that warm environment. You're the caretaker of supplies, ribbons, pamphlets, banner, ballots, lecterns, gavel, and a partridge in a pear tree, patati patata. You begin every meeting on time. You go over proper meeting protocol, kind of the do's and the don'ts. You make sure the room is maintained and kept up with respect. You're in charge of sending out the Zoom account, if that's how your club assigned it. I think a lot of us have kind of figured out, okay, who's the most tech savvy person on our executive team? And that's who runs the, the Zoom account and that's who sends it out and make sure everybody's on. But the, the smart move is we get the Sergeant of Arms to take care of that for us and they run it. They start the meeting, they set the meeting up in, in a physical meeting. It's only right if they've got the tech savvy that they take care of the, the digital side of it. Some clubs are hybrid. A hybrid club, it takes more than one person to set up because you're having to set up dual laptops, make sure the sound, the video, the cameras, microphone, there's a lot to do. That's a team effort when you're setting up a hybrid meeting. And then you hand the meeting over to the presiding officer. So your responsibilities, we're gonna break it down into really four parts, or sorry, three parts of the meeting. You got the club meeting, which is really a core of your time. That's where you're gonna spend everything. Outside the meeting, it's your prep time for the meeting. Sergeant of Arms doesn't have a lot of prep time if you do it right at the meeting itself. The executive meeting is probably your smallest portion. Most times you meet just once a month. The club meeting, we're gonna break that down into four parts. We're gonna break it down into before the club meetings, upon arrival at the club meetings, during club meetings, and well, then the wrapping up the club meetings. So let's jump into the before club meetings. Before I jump into cl before club meetings, are there any questions? If I get going too fast, I've been told that I, I get diarrhea of the mouth and it just runs and it runs. Slow me down, just, just interrupt me. But so before, before the meetings, before you drive to the meeting or now, head to your spare bedroom, lay out that nice, clean, pressed shirt. Because you know, ultimately, that's all we see. I mean, I'm not gonna lie to you. I, I've got a nice suit, pressed, my tie, I got my tie clip, and I'm in board shorts because I know you guys can't see it. So we figure most Zoom meetings consist of that. 
even the construction guys before they left just kind of looked at me like that's how you're presenting well at the end of the day zoom offers that to us that everybody only sees what we want everybody to see so that's the reality side of zoom you want to confirm the venues that can the sorry confirm the venue has nothing in its place most of us we don't own the buildings we don't manage the buildings that we hold our building our meetings in so that means there's gonna be multiple people utilizing. We'll make sure it's available your night. If you share a Zoom link, you wanna make sure that nobody else has scheduled that Zoom link for that night, whether it's an educational night, it's a personal meeting. If it's again shared, make sure you're just communicating. You wanna ensure, you wanna ensure your suitcase, your tote on wheels, or the trunk of your car, depending how you organize your supplies, they're, they're fully there and, and with extras. Zoom, one thing that it does offer us is a lot easier now is all your documents are right there. They can be right here on a zip drive. You're not having to unpack, pack, move stuff around. Everything's right here on a zip drive. Zip drive might be outdated technology and after last meeting, I was informed that it's outdated uh, technology. The way I look at a zip drive is what I've understood over the last couple of years. It's equivalent to having an old school Toastmaster go from the book to Pathways. That's me going from a zip drive to Google Docs. I, I love the zip drive. It, I have all the documents my particular club uses on my zip drive. That way I have everything accessed right there. If your club uses Google Docs, you want to make sure that you have your Google Docs sitting right there on your computer and ready. I mean, how many times have we been to a meeting and for some reason somebody doesn't show up? You have that last minute change and instead of saying, hey, who has an evaluation form? All of a sudden you start seeing cameras shut off and everybody's thumbing through their computer trying to see if they have one. The sergeant of arms can be that one stop shop because in a physical meeting, we would come to you, hey, do you have an extra ballot, an extra this, extra that? If you have everything right there on a zip drive on Google Docs, or if you have a lot of memory saved on your hard drive, the specific files you guys use, it's real simple. The president, the Toastmaster can go, hey, Jason, can you send person X an evaluation form? Can you send them a timer sheet? You're not, you're not holding up the meeting. It makes it real seamless if everything is right there with the sergeant of arms. Again, I use a zip drive. I think 50% of the clubs last time, they use Google Docs because Google Docs works. What works for you is what you wanna go with. What you're comfortable with is what you wanna stick with. So uh, upon arrival at the meeting, now that you're, you're at the club or Right now in today's society, that press shirt is on. It's nice. It's, you're dressed up. It's time to work your magic. Time to make create that face of the club. So we're going to go over and I'm going to dress the physical room first. And then I'll come back and, and readdress the Zoom portion of it because, well, some people might be going to physical meetings coming up soon. And some may never see a physical meeting as a sergeant of arms. In the physical room, you want to get there 30 minutes early. I had a sergeant of arms. My, my ideology is if you're not 15 minutes early, you're late. So I show up 15 minutes early. My sergeant of arms was there when I was president. I was impressed. Meeting after meeting, she'd always beat me there. So then I started going 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes. She was always there. Then I always wondered, okay, maybe she lives in the development and this is her clubhouse that she uses. No, she was just that prepared. She was always there. Everything was set up. So you want to get there early. Make sure everything's set up the way you want. You want to arrange the room to your club standards. You got to remember our, our attendance is going to fluctuate. If your club's growing and you're seeing more and more guests, get ahead of it. You don't want to interrupt the meeting and having to add chairs, tables halfway through. Get ahead. Always put an extra table, an extra set of chairs. You know if your membership's growing. So again, you as a sergeant of arms, you've got to be cognizant of where your membership is going and you want to be one step ahead of it. Set up your banners, banners, ribbons. Make sure they're neat and clean. If, if they're starting to curl up, 
glue a one ounce fishing lure to the back side of it. That'll keep it nice and taut, keeps it straight. But those banners, we gotta be proud of them. It, those, our members get to see it and be like, ah, oh, that's what we're achieving. We're doing it. When guests come in, it shows that as a club, we have something to offer. Because it, again, our members are growing. They're, they're achieving these, these ribbons. And again, it just shows that there's a team effort to grow. It makes the guests feel a little more comfortable that, hey, this club, I may not know it now, but this club has something to offer based off that tree of ribbons they have hanging back there. You wanna set up the, the lectern and the gavel. You wanna set out the materials, name cards, timer sheets, ballads, blank love notes, whatever your club uses. Again, everybody has their own little tips and tricks and they kind of cater to their club. So there's gonna be little different forms. You wanna check the room temperatures. Obviously summer equals hot, winter equals cold. If you're in an office building or a restaurant, well, again, we don't manage those. So we've got to politely find somebody and ask them to adjust it for us. And again, it goes back to the politely because it's not our room. So we've got to be able to reach out to people. Now the reality is the fun part begins. You get to show off your work and you get to make that strong, inviting, energetic first impression. That, that's what's going to stick. As our guests come in, they should be greeted with a big introduction and an eye contacting handshake. You gotta remember, you're the face of the club again. So you wanna show confidence. If you're not energetically over the top, just politely ask them to sign the guest book and let them know that's just so we can hunt them down and get their money from them. Again, a little humor will create the, kind of ease their mind a little. <clears throat> And then just take them to, to an officer that is available that can help them. And really, we just want to, in conversation, we want to find out why is that guest there? What are they expecting from us as a club? And that's really, that's what that initial conversation should entail. Again, if you're not over the top like me, because I'm not going to lie, I, I wear myself out at times. So I'm not expecting people to be like me and over the top, you just have to find that person that will ask the right questions and just get down to the whys. So let's let's bounce back um, and let's kind of just address the Zoom side of it. What, what's that look like for you guys now? Because your role, again, has changed more than anybody's role when it comes to the executive team. You wanna make sure the Zoom link's available. And I spoke about that already. If you share a link, you've got to make sure that it's scheduled and ready for your guys' nights of the meeting. You want to open the Zoom 30 minutes early. This allows, one, members to be able to socialize, but more importantly, it allows the guests to figure out their camera, their, their speakers, their microphone. A year into this, most everybody now has done something on Zoom, but you still get the people that are, are learning. I, I'm just a I learn just as well as everybody else, but if you open it up 30 minutes early, that allows us to be able to walk people through and kind of coach them where they need to be. I, I hope you cleaned your room. So the room should be organized or at least what is behind you is neat, clean and organized. Being we're on Zoom, you don't get the privilege to really show up with the ribbons, but you still need to be proud of them. So if your laptop allows it, take a picture of your ribbons and that's what you wanna set as your backdrop. That way when people are logging on, they're seeing the ribbons. And again, there's no different than seeing them in person or as your backdrop. It just shows that as a team, we're striving for one goal and that's to make everybody better. If your laptop doesn't have that ability, well then just set them up behind you. That way it's still in your background and people can still be able to see the success of the club. For me, my laptop doesn't allow it. And everybody just says, because I operate on an Android system and my laptop won't handle, it's not smart enough for any of that. Um, I refuse to go to Apple for financial reasons. So in turn, I, don't, I can't share a backdrop. But again, it comes down to, you wanna be proud of those ribbons. 
zip drive, you want to make sure you have your zip drive with you or you have your Google Docs minimized. That way you have fast access to them. Temperature, you have full control of that one. So hopefully the temperature is set correct for you. Here's an important part. As the guest book doesn't exist, you want to make sure we're still reaching out to everybody in private chat. Not everybody's going to want to put their email address into a, a public chat or the group chat. So you want to reach out to them privately and get their email address immediately. That allows our VP of membership or whoever in your club has been assigned to engage, reach out to that person after the meeting. Find out what did they like? What Again, what do they want? But as the sergeant of arms, it's very important that you're reaching out right when people log on and getting, getting their email address and just create a list. And at the end of the meeting, email it over to your vice president of membership. That way they have a list that they can start going to people and pro not process, move that stuff into free toast toast. That way, again, we're able to flag people as members, as potential members, past members. It, again, free toast host, it offers that but it only offers it if we get the information from the person. Because once they click that X, they're gone. We don't get to chase them down to their car. So it's very important that as the Sergeant Arms, you're, you're reaching out and getting a hold of the person. So during the club meetings, any questions before I move on to during club? All right. So you saw Jason do it. He gave a five minute warning. Some clubs do five minute and a two minute warning. But you want to give a warning before the meeting begins. You're just going to go up to the lectern, give a five minute, two minute warning. And to start the meeting, you're just going to bang the gavel, give your club's introduction, and then give the meeting protocols. Some clubs are similar and some are different. Some start with a Pledge of Allegiance. Some start with a prayer. Some don't start with any of that. It's really it's up to your club. The person that you're replacing, they're going to give you that information. Now, protocols are similar for all clubs when it comes to courtesy, bathrooms, Zoom protocol. And again, I put the Zoom protocol in the attachment that are in the chat that I feel is an all encompassing and very detailed on the Zoom protocol. At that point, you're just handing the meeting over to the presiding officer. That way it takes off. You're just gonna go back to your chair now. Well, we're going to stick to the Zoom on that one. If, well, physical meeting, you want to sit by the door to intercept people so the meetings don't get interrupted. On Zoom, you want to be watching for people's screens to pop in at the last minute or while the meeting's going and just reach out to that person in chat. Get Again, you want to get their name, their information, maybe send them a, a quick tidbit on what to do or what not to do. Maybe they didn't mute their phone or their camera. Reach out to them. Again, as Sergeant of Arms, that's what you want. You want to make sure you're monitoring people coming and going. No speaker wants to be interrupted. So if you're able to head them off and catch them before anything, it's going to make the meeting that much more smooth, that much more seamless. This next one, this one is so important and very intricate to the success of me getting dinner. So coordinating food, if any of you guys are going to have meetings that are food or there, at the last slide, my phone number will be there. Call me. I'll come help you set up. I'll help you clean up. I will even take the leftovers with me. That, that's a very important part of our meetings. I love food. I love to eat. I take food and candy to every meeting I go to. You know, I love to eat. So just call me. I'll, I'll take care of that for you guys. Depending on what kind of meeting you're having, you might be collecting ballots, tallying ballot sheets, or any other voting situation. Right now, we're in contest season. So you, you depending when your club's holding it or whatever they're naming it, maybe they didn't, they're not naming it a contest. Whatever we're naming it, you're going to help facilitate that and, and make sure the documents are, are getting properly counted or the proper person is getting the credit that needs to move on. After the club meetings, this, this one, it's a team effort. Nobody wants to all of a sudden end the meeting, everybody runs out the door and leaves you there to fold up tables, pack up chairs, dump trash. It's a team effort. And that's what your executive team needs to do is build that 
that team effort that everybody just kind of steps up and takes care of it. Packing up after a meeting, I've realized it's like going camping. You take everything out, everything fit when you got there. When you pack up, nothing fits back in the bag, back in your wagon, your suitcase, your to whatever you've got, nothing ever fits back in there properly. That's where it, it'll behoove you take your time. Make sure everything gets put back in neat and clean. Don't let us rush and be like, oh, we got to go, we got to go. I got kids to feed. I've got other meetings. Take your time. Pack up nice and neat. That'll make your next setup that much more easier. For Zoom, it's real easy. You just got to hit the X and you're good to go. Always dispose of your trash. You want to dispose of your trash under the guidance of whatever agreement you have with your clubhouse, with your restaurant. If you're in a restaurant, maybe everybody gets an extra dollar because you don't have to clean anything up. They're going to put the tables back. They're going to put the chairs back. They're going to throw all the trash away. You just want to give a little bit extra tip to that person that's going above and beyond for you guys. Outside the club meeting, this is where you get to prepare for your meetings. So you really, if you're changing a meeting, that's when you're going to want to have to reach out and reschedule, reach out to the clubhouse, reach out to the restaurant, let them know that for some, whatever reason it is, you're changing the meeting. Or the Zoom protocol, or for the Zoom meeting, you wanna reach out to this, whoever again, if you're sharing it, make sure that the Zoom link is available to you at that specific time. Ensure adequate supplies are available. The key to this one is very simple. If you're keeping inventory at every meeting, you know what you're gonna need and you know, you're gonna know when you need it. The beautiful thing about Zoom, your supplies never run low. You're just a, a digital click away from everything. But when we do go back, you wanna make sure that you have enough supplies to be able to facilitate the meeting. Because again, those other six, <clears throat> six officers are relying on you to be able to have everything for us. You're gonna attend the executive committee meetings. These ones, they're only typically scheduled once a month. Where the kicker is that they're not always in the same meeting place. Some people rotate restaurants, rotate times. I know at Summerlin, we always hold it at the same spot. We just hold it 45 minutes prior to our meeting. You wanna, you wanna arrange your replacement. This one, this one will serve two purposes and it's very important. Your sergeant of arms, they're expected to attend every meeting. Think about that. That's a big expectation. If you're in a club that attends four meetings a week, do the math. That's a lot of meetings that the sergeant of arms is expected to attend. You're expected to attend because you start the meeting, you have the supplies. So nobody else is expected. There is an expectation that everybody else is there, but as sergeant of arms, we're expected to truly be there because the meeting, again, it just doesn't roll off without us being there. So you want to make sure that you have your backup. You have that person that you train. That's going to create a seamless transition. So if you, you created that one person that they have everything you have, when your role ends and they take over, it's smooth. It, it pretty much, it just rolls right along. So if you think about it this way, if you were thrown into this position, trial by fire, you know how un uncomfortable that can be. If you were coached, trained, leading up to this, well, then you know how easy the transition is. Preparation in this, it's the key to success. It's going to be the key to your successor being successful, and it's going to be the key for your club to be successful. Your executive committee meetings, this is where you're gonna update the executive committee on the club meeting spaces. Right now, your, your update, and I know we reach out to our Sergeant of Arms probably about once a month. Hey, is the room available? Are they gonna open it up? That's really what your update's gonna consist of is at what point can we go back to a physical meeting? And what does that look like? What does social distancing look like at your guys' venue? And unfortunately, there's some clubs that they're going to have to update the executive committee on the fact that there is no longer a venue for us to use, which in turn leads to the next one is work to coordinate a meeting space. 
as some of us are going to lose our venues, we've got to phone a friend. We've got to reach out to our contacts and the relationships we've built with members to be able to find an another meeting space. I personally don't mind looking for a new meeting space because it gives me a chance to try a bunch of different restaurants to see if they're going to work or not. And it, convinces, it helps me convince my wife to go out to dinner. And I know to stay away from IHOP and Egg Works because I know they're going to say yes. So when it comes down to it, then I will go there. But I'll say that it gives me a reason to go try every other restaurant out there. You're going to chair a social and reception committee. So if anybody watches the office, that's the party committee. So you're going to do the open houses and contests. And if you're going to have anniversary parties, that's what, that, that's what you're going to be in charge of. Replace items as needed. That's where you're going to let the executive committee know, hey, we're running low on pins, ribbons, love notes, whatever supply you guys use. That's where you want to explain to them, hey, we need to get this. And again, we order in bulk because we want to sh save on shipping. So really this one slide can sum up my whole presentation. How? How do you do your job? On time and prepared with supplies. When? Every meeting. Who? Your executive team is there to help you. What? All the resources you can find. So that seems very simple, but you have to really step back and ask yourself, how will you fulfill this responsibility? We're all different. We organize differently. We stack our, our supplies differently. So you gotta ask yourself, how are you gonna do it? Is it gonna be a wagon? Is it gonna be a zip drive? Is it gonna be Google Docs? When will each action be completed? Well, your executive teams and president's gonna give you the time of when do you need each action completed? Is it 10 minutes before a meeting? Is it right at the meeting? Who is available to help you? Your executive team. They're a wealth of knowledge. What materials and resources can you use? TI is a rabbit hole of information. You just keep going and going down rabbit hole after rabbit hole after rabbit hole. And you just keep gaining more and more and more knowledge. So just a, a quick checklist. If you go into TI's homepage, type whatever you want in the upper right search bar, it's gonna pop up. Anything you type in, it's gonna pop up. You may have to change your words a little. You have your executive team as a resource. You have your area director. Your area director, we're the contact between the club and the division. That's what we're there for. You heard it earlier, we have 16,200 clubs. That's 16,200 Sergeant of Arms that you're able to reach out to. Here's some other resources. So if you took, let's take the Distinguished Club Program, Club Success Plan. If you type that 1111 in the search box, your Distinguished Club Program is gonna pull up and it'll allow you to download it. Let's take ballots and briefings. If you type item number 163 into the search bar, well, you're not gonna get ballots and briefing, brief evaluations because it's not found. But it shows you there's many other ways to access it. Just type the word ballots and brief evaluations. And I left that in there without fixing it for that purpose right there to show that there's just different ways to access information. Now really, you're getting started? Look, you've already started. You're attending the district sponsored club officer training program. You did it. I know you guys, it's your second time doing it, but you did it. Read the materials. What materials? Well, TI offers a lot of materials. The Sergeant of Arms, there's, it's not lengthy. Matter of fact, when you pull it up, this is the PowerPoint you're gonna get, but pull it up and read it, it'll help you. You wanna meet with the outgoing executive committee. That's gonna where you're gonna get your information of what worked and what didn't work. The real part, meet with your outgoing Sergeant of Arms. He or she will tell you truly what didn't work. You wanna to stick to what does work, but the reality of it is, you don't wanna make the same mistake twice. So understand what they've already tried and what that didn't work for them. You uh, meet with your current executive committee. That's where you're gonna build the relationships. That's where you guys are gonna build your plan of how are we gonna finish the year? So right now we're halfway through the year or through over three quarters of the way. How do we finish strong? What can we do as an executive team to really just drive that last bit of membership, get our members over that last little pathway? How, 
how do we, uh, sorry, how do we finish strong? Introduce yourself to the meeting space contacts. You want to build a relationship with them because every meeting is not going to be the same. You're going to have to move some earlier, some later, cancel some. So you want to have a good relationship with your contacts. And at the end of it all, the most important is ask for help. Ask for volunteers to help you take on the roles, to help you clean up, help you set up, help you fulfill your role. That's what we're here for is help. Whether we're helping people speak, set up, fulfill their roles, Toastmasters is about resources and about helping each other succeed, no matter what it is. So, so important is ask for volunteers. With that, that is in my 36 minutes. That concludes the session. My name's there, my email address is there, my cell phone is there. My cell phone is, cell phone and email are my best way to contact me. I, I made a mistake when I first signed up for this role and I put my home number on um, Toastmasters International. Very few people use landlines. I use a landline because I don't have reception up here at my house. And I came home one, one week and I had 27 voicemails because our phone is hidden behind our coffee maker. So we just never, and it was obviously a political year. So all the spam, um, my cell phone is there. I am there to help answer really any question that I can. So with that, we'll move on to the question and answer. If there is any questions, concerns, thoughts, what do we got, anybody? So I'm not gonna lie, I prepared for this. Am I that good of a presenter at passing everything out and detailed information? Because that's what I got from the last time when nobody had a question. <laughs> I have a couple things to add, Rick, if you don't mind. Absolutely, Jason, I would appreciate that. Um, I can tell you from my experience as club president, and Rick can probably tell you this as well, that social committee, or at least the Sergeant at Arms acting as that social committee is more important than you might think. A lot of clubs overlook this. A lot of people come to Toastmasters, especially when we get back to being able to meet in person again, they're looking for a social component in addition to just the education and leadership component. So just thinking about some things you can do, some clubs leave things open an extra half an hour, an hour for networking. Some clubs plan events that aren't part of their meeting or out on a different night. Just being conscious that, that many people come to Toastmasters for a little more of that social experience as well. That social committee is more important than you think. And I know when I was a club president, I overlooked it a lot. So um, when it comes to the schedule, as the Sergeant at Arms, make sure you're taking the time to talk to your prepared speakers, your Toastmaster of the Day and your club officers, if they're gonna be doing anything special that might affect the configuration of the room or the transitions between items. This is where we get lost a lot uh, in a meeting is sometimes the transitions aren't so smooth between one thing to another because we weren't prepared for them. And Toastmasters is about being entertaining somewhat. We're communicators, we're leaders. We wanna be entertaining, engaging and energizing with our meetings. So think about those transition between things. And if ahead of time, you can work with the speakers, the Toastmaster of the day to make sure that those transitions are gonna go smoothly. It's really gonna impress your guests. And what I mean by that is no one ever remembers if a transition went smoothly, but they do remember if it didn't go well. So just think about transitions between parts of the meeting and what we, might, what we might be able to do in order to make those go smoothly, both for our speakers and our audience as well. And just like Rick said, you don't have to do it all alone. And especially in that run up to the meeting, those first few minutes of the meeting as guests are coming in, don't try to do it all alone. When you're meeting in person, use that time, get that information from that guest, but hand them off to another member introduce them and get them in a conversation with another member so you can be there making sure that every guest comes in gets that warm greeting that Rick was talking about so that some guests don't wander in while you're talking to another guest and they they don't get that warm welcome that warm greeting and on zoom it's the same thing make sure they feel welcome have them introduce themselves get them engaged in the conversation that's happening on zoom before the meeting starts 
and then while you get once they're all engaged now you can do those private chats to get their information from them like rick said so those are the three things that came to mind throughout your presentation rick thank you jason and i i did overlook one of my notes that was suggested at the last one when you guys attend your next meeting if you're not currently offer to be the chat master so you notice jason was my chat master and he did a, an amazing job for me i failed at that part last time because I thought I, I'd be able to be able to swing chat master and the presentation and I didn't. Um, so when you go back to your next meeting, offer that up as a suggestion as Sergeant Arms, you're monitoring the meeting because you do it in the physical meeting. You do, you monitor and you make sure it's smooth. The key for the chat master again is simply that you're, you're monitoring the meeting. So I would offer to be able to take that over and just alleviate that from one less stress from whoever's already maintaining because it's probably your VP and membership is probably your president It's probably whoever's in charge of the zoom account. Volunteer yourself to be able to take that over and give you it gives you more control of the meeting. What else do we got. I have a question for you. Yes, Gary. We've had a little issue at our meeting at uh, Saturday morning live getting started on time. So we talked about um, giving them the five minute uh, notification, hey, we're going to start in five minutes. But a lot of people are, come in late. And sometimes there are people that have a role to fulfill. Um, how do you handle that? So th there, there's a couple ways you can go about that. Unfortunately, I feel like the better Toastmasters come running in at the last minute because they're they know what they're doing. If I was the Toastmaster, or if I am the one setting up the meeting, I would reach out to everybody that has a role that day or an hour before the meeting, just asking them to, to be on on time. One thing you would want, if people are logging on late, is the key to make sure you get them muted before they can interrupt the meeting. Um, they're waiting for their audio to hook up. They're talking to somebody in their house. The audio hooks up. Now they've interrupted the speaker. So I would definitely make sure the sergeant arms is muting people as they come on or the host because they're the ones that will have control of it. But I think getting ahead of it and just reaching out to the to the members and people that are taking roles and help them understand that we're here to help people grow. We're here, here to help people be successful. And if they're coming on late, now they're interrupting people because now you guys are probably scrambling to find somebody else and seeing if somebody can pinch hit that role. I, I would reach out and just get people to understand it, what we do is respect each other to help be successful is get that commitment from them to be early. Like I said, whether that's that half hour email that you'd send them right before, reach out to them. I, I know meetings opening them a half hour early it works, but it doesn't work if that person's already got the mindset that they're going to be five minutes late or 10 minutes late. Um, so I, we, we know, and I can only speak to Summerlin Toasters, I know the handful that are going to be late. And if they have a role, we just send them a text message or an email. Hey, can you be on time or be five minutes early? That way we can get us a, a seamless transition from the Sergeant of Arms to getting the meeting rolling on. And also, it seems like the and this is an issue that's been addressed as well that you know it kind of like lags on longer and longer is is there a way to like to should we remind people hey you know what the meeting is always supposed to be 90 minutes or however long and you know we need to kind of sp speed things up or is that something that would so i can't speak to your meeting i can speak to Summerlin Toasters, and I mentioned earlier, I get diarrhea of the mouth. So I'm that person that drags that meeting on. <laughs> our, our Toastmaster, that's their job to keep everything in time. So they've got to figure out how do I politely speed person X up? And that's whether they're sending them a personal chat. Um, I, I don't want to sound rude, but I have muted somebody in a meeting because they've just went saw too many squirrels, got a little too sidetracked, and that's not the best route. It doesn't make anybody feel comfortable. But to your point, we have guidelines and we have structure, and that's really what we're trying to teach and make everybody feel comfortable is the structure. So it, if you have to, we, we kind of let it go on the first time, and then when the meeting ends, my president or when I'm president, I just call the person, hey, you know, 
This is the structure. This is the timeline that we kind of stick with. What can I do to help you fall within the guideline? And I, the, most everybody's receptive to it. If we just pull them aside after the meeting, that way I'm not embarrassing anybody during the meeting. Um, just pull them aside one-on-one -on -one after everybody's gone and just kind of explain this because some people may not understand the structure. So helping them understand that hey, this is the time we allocate for each thing, whether it's speakers, whether it's table topics, but pulling them aside and helping them understand it. Unfortunately, you do have to eat it that one meeting, but again, reaching out to them after the meeting and just help them understand it. Most people have been very receptive to it because we haven't embarrassed them or made them feel bad about themselves. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, because we have the, um, the business meeting after, and I think that's what really has been taken the, the, the brunt of the extended time that people want to just chit chat. And, and, you know, it seems kind of like a, a moot point to have the speakers go for three to five minutes or five to seven minutes. And then at the end of the meeting, people are just going to ramble on endlessly, you know, and it kind of, and it has been addressed in our meeting. In that should, there, should there be like, you know, the business meeting is going to take X amount of minutes and then be over? Would that be something that be? Yes. So I know, and again, I, I can speak to Summerlin because I, that club I understand. Our agenda when we send it out has time frames allocated on it per role, per, again, whether it's the business meeting, it's the beginning, it's the table topics, the evaluations. Everything has a time frame set next to it. So when we're going through the meeting, we know at 745, we have to be at whatever spot it is. So again, so when we pass out the agendas, everybody already has it in front of them. They know where we should be at certain times. So, and as the Toastmaster, you know, if you're running over, well, then you start pinching other things. Or if you're falling way short, you kind of extend things on, tell a story. But an agenda with a time frame on it might give people that visual they need to truly understand. And that means maybe your agenda goes into your chat at the beginning of the meeting or an email blast to all your club or all the members attending. Again, it, there's a time frame they can structurally see it and it makes it more real when you can actually see times next to each role. Jason, do you have a different opinion on that one? I have the same opinion. I have a couple of tips and tricks that might help. First, Gary, if you wouldn't mind renaming yourself with your club name. So when we send this recording and chat off to Carol Campbell that you guys get credit for your club for you being here tonight. Um, okay, so a couple things. I think Rick hit all the high points here. Clear agenda. Tip one for your business meeting. Have a clear agenda for your business meeting. What's your old business you're covering? What's any new business somebody might bring up? Don't, don't do your business part of a meeting without an agenda. Um, two, if your business meeting is starting to drag on, put your business at the, front of the, at the front of your agenda. Everyone wants to get to the fun part of the Toastmasters meeting. Put that up front. People will smoke through that because nobody wants to sit and do that. Third, and this is a little bit more of an advanced tip. I'm not even sure if you can still get this, but there's a... Uh, I did it as part of my advanced communicator gold. There's the Toastmasters education series on parliamentary procedure. If the meeting's dragging on, there's a couple things you can do in parliamentary procedure if you're following it to table something for the next meeting to make it old business at the next meeting. So if you really want to get slick about what you're doing, learn your parliamentary procedure rules, learn, learn how to bring up those votes to table something for the next meeting. But off, off the top of my head, make sure you've got a good agenda and if that's not working, if they're dragging out still because people want to chit chat, throw it at the front of the meeting because everyone wants to get to their speech. Very good, thank you, Jason. Thank you, Jason, I appreciate that, smart. Anybody else, what do we got? This is about me learning. So I might be the presenter, but Gary brought up a lot of stuff that I'm learning from. Anybody have tips and tricks that maybe I didn't touch base that you guys do in your clubs? You guys are making me walk away from this film like I did an amazing job. You, you did do an amazing job, Rick. And I, I really appreciate, as someone who is former military, how you are talking about having pride in the room, 
pride in your banner, pride in the ribbons. Um, that's something that I think a lot of Toastmasters clubs take for granted. I know I've taken it for granted at our Toast, at Toastmasters clubs when I've been at in-person meetings. And being proud of those banners and those ribbons and being proud of your club heritage is important. And, and something I'm taking away from this session tonight is as I go back to my clubs, is I'm going to, you know, like a lot of clubs, some of my clubs are struggling with membership. As we bring new members in, I'm going to make sure that we try to educate them about the heritage of our club and why people joined in the past and what was important about it and kind of continue that heritage. And as Sergeant at Arms, that's kind of our job is to be the keepers of that heritage for the year or the six month period we're entrusted with that job. Awesome. Thank you, Jason. Pamela. Uh, Rick, thank you. Enjoyed the presentation. It was wonderful. I shared this with Jason that now that most, most clubs are on Zoom and virtual, they think that the sergeant at arms is not needed. And I learned so much tonight being a virtual sergeant at arms that will help the clubs and still let them know that that is an officer role that is needed, but really enjoy the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Pamela. I appreciate that. And the role has really became more important now than ever. It's your hardest, it's the hardest role. It's the one that changed the most. Anybody else calling it? All right, well, I truly, again, appreciate you guys taking time out of your Thursday night. Nobody wants to take time out of a Thursday night, especially during dinner time. But I, I appreciate it as an area director and I really appreciate you guys attending. And I know your clubs uh, appreciate you guys attending. If you have any questions, just reach out to me. Um, my name was there, my cell phone's there. Um, I'll send everybody just a blanket email with my attachment and my, again, my name and my, my cell phone. So if you have any questions after you hang up, oh, I should have asked him that, send it to me. And I'll reach out to Jason and get you the answer. <laughs> so, with that- hey, I'm, a, I'm a division director, that's my job. And if you've ever been at any of the other trainings we do, um, if you're having trouble getting an answer out of your, your own area director or your own division director, I'm here for everybody. I, I'm, I'm always happy to take your call or your email and see how I can help you, so. Thank how you. do we go about getting, making sure that the club gets credit for attending the training? I'm gonna take care of that. I'm okay. gonna export, I'm gonna export, and that's, uh, Gary, that's why we'd ask you to uh, put your club in your name. I'm gonna okay. export everybody's names, clean up an Excel file, and then send it off to Carol Campbell, and then Carol's gonna take care of that for us. Once she submits everybody's, then I'll go back through and double check and make sure that everybody here got credit. If for some reason, after it's all said and done and your club's not showing a check mark for the goal, all you just reach out to me or reach out to Carol and we'll go through and I save everything digitally in my computer, obviously in my computer. Um, I, I save everything that way I can reaccess it and make sure everybody gets credit. Cause I, I, I know we, that was one kicker with a couple of my clubs last time is somebody got left off, but they're in three different clubs in three different districts. And that's where we kind of got confused. So if you don't, after it's said and done, reach out to me, but I am gonna do my part to make sure everybody's here's names and their clubs make it to Carol Campbell personally. All right, thank you. All right, well, you guys have a great night and I'm looking forward to seeing some of you guys out in your clubs. Thank you. <laughs>